All right, ladies and gentlemen, traders, welcome back to another Relentless Recap. Guys, it's been a while. It's been about two weeks, maybe even three since we've done a recap. But guys, it's been so slow. Slow market conditions here for me and my hyper scalping style. So I eased off a little bit, of course, still live streaming every day, uh, but taking a break on the recaps. But with any significant day, right, whether red, green or anything in between, we will do a recap once it comes down to a day that was really worthy. And guys, today was, I think today might, and I'm, I'm hoping is the first day of hot momentum uh, for the next stretch. I'm hoping, I'm keeping my fingers crossed, hopefully tomorrow we can see some nice opportunities. So as you're tuning in, be sure to take a quick look at our disclaimer here. We'll come back and touch bases on it. Uh, we'll take a quick look and let's jump into it. So we'll come down to single screen here, guys. We are red today, down 1,100. As you guys can tell from the uh, thumbnail, right? We're down 1,100, almost 1,200, actually. I think I'll put 1,200 there for the recap. Um, yeah, we had a CTMX, ticker symbol CTMX. Fairly decent move, man. Fairly decent move. Uh, but I was not quite ready for the momentum. And, you know, I always have this issue, man. It's almost like a broken record at this point where I say throughout the years, the first solid day after a cold stretch, man, I always have trouble adjusting. I always have trouble adapting quickly and, and, and making that necessary change in the moment. You know, it's like there's something in the back of my mind still saying, hey, is this for real? And also on top of that, missing earlier moves and maybe overcompensating a little bit too much for the risk in later moves, right? Because there's this thing in my in my mind, I'd say, which maybe you can work on and maybe even eliminate. But as a stock progresses, I expect myself to be performing relative to the move. And if I don't, I start to think about the backside. I start to think about the risk. And so I think ultimately I fell victim to that today by not being as aggressive later into the move where there were still solid opportunities. Right. So let's pull it up here on screen. CTMX just to get a quick good look. CTMX, this one here today, guys. I mean, absolutely incredible move. Going all the way from about 170 yesterday up to 585, a 240% move. Absolutely impressive, absolutely incredible indeed. Pre market, I wasn't around for this. I guys know I don't really trade pre market, but you know, coming in around 910, 915 area. This is where I started consolidating here sideways. High point was about 337. Low initially 287, but we were holding fairly tight coming in towards the open about 315. But coming in, it did pull back first, right? And sometimes this is what happens, right? A stock will sometimes be a little slower starting the day after a huge move up. And then after some sideways consolidation, we get a solid, solid push. And you know. I, I usually look for uptrending opportunities. And so, you know, watching at a stock like this, you know, hindsight, of course, 2020, but, you know, where we had our pre-market low mapped out, you know, coming over here closer to the open, or let's say after the open, you know, below 87, we had 78, about a, 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 a 10, 9 cent drop before it got back above the level. Really and truly, really and truly, you know, this area here, it doesn't look pretty in the moment, right? I mean, it coming into the open, this does not look pretty. But being in simply right here and having my risk be at the lows, I mean, hey, hindsight is twenty twenty. But if I'm watching for this particular entry, my risk is ten cents to the previous low, and you know, watching to see if we can reclaim eighty seven and so forth. That would have worked out splendidly. But of course, I would have had to hold the stock for about an hour. Or maybe let's say yeah about an hour from 9 45 to 10 20 let's say 40 minutes it's, that would have been difficult to do for how i trade right so that is hindsight being 2020 right but if i could go back in time with a load of hundred thousand shares for 10 cents you know ten thousand dollar risk can we go to the moon is there someone out there who might have took that trade perhaps i don't know uh, but anyhow, for what I look for, first we're consolidating, and I do want to check and see where my first trade came. First, it's consolidating, and then it rips up here. So break of VWAP over 306, 
results into a move all the way to 330. So I'm going to come back. We're going to look at some video here as well, but let's come on down. My first trade came at 327. I'm in. Actually, no, this might be at the open. This is at the open. Hold up. We got to check around 53 for a more accurate read here. So I'm seeing 56 and that came at 350. So yeah, I, you know, this is part of the problem for me here, right? Searching for that hotter stock early, rotating through, switching around. And, you know, even again in a hot market, becoming a little, uh, becoming a little complacent, not really paying as much attention to the leading stock as I probably should have been, right? Because if I'm, if I'm positioning myself here well, I should have already been watching at this as it's getting closer to VWAP. Did it look beautiful immediately? You know, not, not right away, but after we got a few candles in, this is where I would have wanted to start taking this seriously around 947 and paying attention. So sometimes this is, this is part of what's required and I'm watching at the time PALI. So, you know, opportunity is going to cost around 946. I'm watching PALI and this one here around 870s as we're trying to get some trades there. This is part of the deal with the market is that you look away at something else or you're, you're just not paying as much of attention as you should be. And you start to like get behind in some sense. So that was part of what happened today too. But you know, besides that, seeing the move here, I think from about 25, not being able to get in until about 50. This is part of me having that bias of, hey, it's, it's a colder market and it's a colder market and I got to be careful not to buy extended i don't want to buy 30 because i think we can potentially pull back maybe 10 15 somewhere there perhaps maybe even uh high teens before this continues but it just goes straight up 30 and then 50. and once we started to consolidate here i tried at 56 area i believe i believe that's where the first few trades might have came in uh, scrolling in the wrong direction here 56 yeah i tried 56 break of 50 it what you can see i'm keeping my stops incredibly tight here and it wasn't quite ready it pulled back i, I mean i you know this is the thing with trading it it's a tight rope walk you know in the broader community right marcelo likes to say it as well like the fine line right it's a tight rope walk and the difference is so small because this green candle really and truly could have happened right here at 50 where i was looking to give it the attempts now the reason why i'm not long get this pali resumes i, I wish i had my e-trade pro opened pali resumes exactly at this time right in fact it should be on like momo pro um but yeah it, it resumes right at 57 and it's a little disappointing because I take my eye off the level two to look over. We're about at maybe 47, 45. I, you know, you got to blame yourself first. I look away. I look back. This thing is at 380. Are you freaking kidding me? You know, being able to throw out the orders again at 50 could have could have been good for me to capture that trade to put me in, in more control of the day. Because again, I'm already missing this move here. Missed this initial push over three. Saw it at 3.30. I'm just behind on the eight ball. Behind, behind on my heels. Missed this move. And now the first dip pulls back the low 70s here from a high of 90. And I've thought to myself, man, this is holding super high. I think I want to see more of a pullback, right? We just went from 50 to 90. And really and truly, we didn't have a red candle in here either. So if we want to say we went from 3 to 390 without a dip and the first dip is went to 75, that's super tight. It's, it would be great really if we would have held there like through and through. But you can see I'm going to buy here on this red candle, low 70s, it immediately teleports down to 55 and that's a 10 a.m. And I stopped out on that low, which is never good because I'm essentially buying I sh I'm selling where I should be buying right here in at 72 out at 60. 
I should have been buying at 60, 55 area and then looking for the move up. So I got caught and you know, my initial instinct, man, this is the thing that can allow you to get frustrated or let's say make you frustrated. But I, I always keep my cool because I understand it's business as usual. Sometimes in the live stream, I say, man, I literally waited, waited, waited. And then the last moment where I think, you know, hey, it's good enough and it's not actually going to kind of follow through to my intuition. I give in to buy and then the actual trade that I'm looking for comes. That's on me because guess what? I, I could have avoided this trade. I could have said, hey, I'm going to just keep waiting. If I don't see what I like, I'm not going to touch it. And that should have been the mindset here. I think that's what needs to be more of the mindset for me to not get caught in these type of moves down. And I'll get caught in that flush and it bounces up splendidly from six from 55 or let's say 54 to 90, retesting the highs in less than like 40 seconds. So even if I'm in at 55, 60 area and I'm selling at 75, 80, we avoid this loss down and we get the move up. It's a double positive rather than a double negative. Getting in higher, stopping out and missing the dip right those things like that compounds and it's the small decision making through and through throughout the day so i'm watching at the wrong stock here i literally you know think it's a little too extended for the market that we're in in this area here so i avoid getting in i look away here this one i, I give in i bought the dip a little too high i get caught Key, four key areas where I could have already been nicely green, struggling, struggling. What I do like about this is that it tells me if I'm to be very disciplined towards what I know works, I will do well. So it's up to me to be a little bit more firm tomorrow. to be a little bit more firm so we had this low 54 we, we, we got up to 90 it pulls back here to 60 i think i took i think i took all two or at least i tried let's see i took 68 i took 65 and so i took 65 i sold 72 a bit of an early sell the second half 72 um Let's see, I got back in for 72 scratch trade there. I needed to hold this position either a little longer or the position at 72 a little longer. But I, I thought I saw what, what was happening at the time. So all of this in my mind, in, in my head, all of this right here from, because I'm in, I bought, let's see, 70, uh, 68. This was too high. I bought it, I bought it 68. This was too high. I'm going to re-average for for lower i'm in at 60 65 so all of this is me watching this red candle trying to anticipate how low we're gonna go are we gonna go 55 again maybe sub 50 maybe high 50s maybe low 60s so this is me giving it a shot here to see what it's gonna do and i like that i'm throwing this order back out which is good so i'm in i think it, it gets to 77 uh on this last position but i didn't sell immediately was watching for over 80 um but it comes back down I cut it, but I, I know I need to be back in, right? So I'm watching it. This is all as one trade. So even if my cost basis is higher, as long as the stock is moving away from my mark, from my, um, my entry price, I'm good. I'm going to keep watching for this to go higher and higher, right? So that's essentially what I'm going to do here. And, you know, it's not clean. It's not clean because you can see a lot of sense is missing in between. You know, we needed a few less trades, longer hold here, I think but uh 85 to 89 87 to 85 not great there but then the break of 390 we're gonna finally capture a good move so remember this stock has been giving good breakouts over three huge move over 50 huge move over 90 bro i can't believe i'm red on, like this stuff it's stuff kind of like it's ridiculous to be red on a stock like this and I said it during the live stream, the amount of things that have to go wrong. So now over 90 right here. I'm in. 
at 90 and i'll show you guys this trade i can show you guys this trade in the level two but i'm in and it's a decent move right i'm in at 90 and it rips up to 15 and then it proceeds to then dip from fit from i think the high right there was 18 or 20 20 from 20 we get a quick dip almost instantly dips to four and i'm thinking can we hold the whole dollar to swing to slingshot back to 410 412 415 somewhere there but i'm gonna get caught i'm gonna get caught and i sized up here because i like this trade but you know i think in some situations i'm gonna avoid it i'm gonna avoid it in some situations right i'm gonna avoid it in some situations but in this particular instant i thought it was good i'm gonna get blazed i'm in with size and i'm out at 80 20 cent loss this this is not good this is about a thousand dollar loss almost in one trade just after finally connecting after you know missing all these opportunities finally connecting here to then size up and then get caught in the move down the good news is that it consolidated tightly and i mentioned hey back over 90 i'm interested again but we need to hold 95 area well and push forward didn't touch the lows didn't trust it we are still in a weaker market and we had this candle i'm thinking perhaps backside so from here i'm watching for back over 95 and i'm going to look to quick scalp it i'm not going to look to, to hold for super long but in hindsight again that would have probably worked out much better but you know it's part of the deal my style is my style and i'll live by my style i'm in at 98 i'm out at 06 and what gets me here is that we went from we went right here from 83 to 4 a quick dip from 4 to 95 and then we pushed up to about i think we got to like 12 or 10 and then it come it came back down to four to like 304 this is all within this green candle but i'm thinking we might need to see like 95 97 90 you know i, I didn't want to buy aggressively and wait so that's why i didn't hold this trade right here this entry is me noticing on the level two that it's like it's not dipping but also my intuition is kind of telling me it might need to come down some more so again this is one of those areas where there's like a small conflict of interest based off of what the level two is saying and what I think. But ultimately, I still want to be reactive. I still want to, because what, what can always save me if it comes down some more is keeping a tight stop. Is, is there going to be days and trades where I get caught, like the trade we looked at before, where I bought 72 area, stopped out at 60? That's going to happen. But, you know, even then, that was, what, a 12 cent loss. It was a little unfortunate that I didn't get a chance to get back in but I still want to be reactive. You know, it's it's one of those things, man, where you, you got to be rigid. You got to be rigid. But, you know, sometimes it, sometimes it just, there's that discrepancy and you got to just use your best judgment. So it's one, one of those, it's one of those things, you know, I'm not going to beat myself up about it, but I'm in it for, there's a lot of red hitting the tape at the time. So I'm like, man, you know, what is it going to be? Are we going to hold here or, or not? So I'm in, then I'm out, then I'm in again, and then I'm out, and you can see from 13, so the next couple of minutes, this, so this is where it's going to take off. So I tell you, man, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, I think the green started to hit the tape. Let's, let me, let's pull it up. I think green started to hit the tape at like... 406 407 what time of day is this 10 13 let's see how much did i get get green by here man this 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 is just mm, mm, mm. well it wasn't that huge of a trade actually i was red 90 I didn't take it with any sort of real size, so I guess. Ten. 
See, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Did it even show 15? CTMX right hand side of the screen. We went from 90, 97, there's four. Okay, it showed 412. Wow. What a disaster. Man, these 1500 shares is really not a lot. Jeez. This is why I pushed my base size higher in the hotter market. Just watching back at this trade here. We'll, we'll go back to the trade we were looking at in a sec. But anyhow, so this is where that loss came. So we kind of were seeing, yeah, this was a, I'll take that trade anytime, man. It's all good. It did show 17, 16, but for like a split second. So once it pulls back to four, I'm in. I'm in looking for that bounce. But right here, right here, once we start to get back above the level, I'm going to take break of four for a quick couple of cents. There's some sweat, there's some small sellers, but I love how we're holding 94, 95. I think I should have been in a little earlier too. I think right here I could have bought 94. I should have bought right here. I should have bought right there with a tight stop. And then I should have added for break of four here. Once the green starts to really get in, I should have added right here and sold the first position and then hold to see what was going to happen. So I'm, I took the profits and right here I'm watching at it. Like, are we going to drop down or not? Are we going to pull back or not? And right, watch, watch once this green starts to hit the tape. So again, I think I said it started from like six, seven. It's at seven by eight. Once the green really starts to hit the tape here, it's this like over 10 is where I need to be back in. So it came, came down to three, two. And this is where I'm going to put out those two, two or three trades. It's going to start from about six, seven, eight area, somewhere there. Or one. So I'm going to try again. I didn't like that it wasn't immediate, but again, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking it needs to pull back more. So I'm a little skeptical of those entries. But watch once we start to see six, seven, eight right here. And the, we wait for that green to really hit the tape. Seven, eight, nine is okay, right here, right there, man. Fucking hell. Brother. This is the, this is the thing with the stock, man. So if I'm in there and I give it a couple of seconds to see if it wants to go. Looking for 20. Because, you know, you guys will hear me sometimes say, hey, can I see 20 out of this? 22, 25 out of this. If I'm there with that expectation of can we retest? Because 20 is high of day. Previous high of day. If I give this a chance, a couple of seconds to get up there. The moment it gets to like 17, it instantaneously gets to 47. And then 68. And in my mind, I'm kind of kicking myself a little bit because I know I could have so easily been in there, man. I could have so easily been in there. But for me, the way how a day like this becomes a $10,000 day is when the move that I took down here is this green candle. You know, because I'm in, I'll be in, literally be in like four. 4,000 shares at tw at, uh, at 4, it gets to 15. Because imagine if it does a quick bounce right there, back to 15, and then teleports to 50, and then say, you know, what's the math on that, right? I'm going to show you guys another trade too, which is the higher risk trade from the resumption. Was 4,000 times 0. 0.68. Right there is 2,700 in just that trade. Now you're really like making a good stride on the day. It's halted at 68. Watch this resumption right here, man. Sad, sad, sad. If I think if I if I'm to capture that move up, I more than likely would take this trade. And let me, let me tell you guys why this trade is super high risk. And that if you know it's it you can lose a t you can lose a lot of money. You can lose a lot of money, which is why I didn't take it here. Knowing I didn't have a cushion, knowing that I was a little red. This is a trade that I'd only like to take in, in hotter markets. And being that this stock was a hotter stock, it would have worked. 
but under the context of a colder market, I was a little skeptical. So, you know, all that playing in my mind. But we resume at 68, and it does not, it not, it does not dip. So there's a resumption. There's a resumption. There's a small seller, but it's as if nobody wants to sell, and short seller starts to cover. Man, it, it's like the indi the indication to buy right there is not green on the tape, not red on the nothing, none of that. It's just you buying strictly off the strength of hey, I think this can go higher because short should be covering. It's a tremendously high risk trade that I take in hover markets and it's paid off extremely well sometimes. But under the days where this entry fails, you will be the person who bought the high at 65. You blunt you blink and it'll give an equal and opposite reaction. You're in at 65. And instead of it going to 550 or 560, you're in at six, you're in at 465, and it's down at 390, 380. And you're saying, dang, why was I so aggressive? So it's high risk, high reward. If you can identify that the stock is strong and that it should keep going, and you have a, that conviction, the intuition, the technicals, everything backing you up, it's a it's a trade that's there. But you know, you have to know what you're getting yourself into. You cannot afford to take this type of equal and opposite loss, panic, deer in the headlights, average down. That could that you know, that's the type of risk that this this entry has. It could ruin your account if you freeze and panic after a halt down, you know? So the risk is there, but some people might even say, hey, that was a fast trade. It was, but watching it real time. If I wanted to be and I could have been in. And shout out to Tim, by the way, who did take that trade. Tim was in there, 5,000 shares, and I think sold. Got up, might have gotten out a little early. Let me check in the Discord. I think he sold early at 18. Let's double check. I Shout out to Tim, man. Tim caught that. Trading with the Timmy. Timmy, Tim, Timmy. Yeah, he's out somewhat early. Um, but even then, you can't really complain because you ca you caught a massive move. Oh, I'm going in the wrong direction. I'm going in the wrong direction. Let me see if there was a chance to get back in after the first push. Uh, I, I don't know. It's like I could see myself getting a high fill right at 50 if I would have tried it. It depends on how fast I would have been, been able to, to realize. Because that's the first move. Oh my gosh. It would have been. Uh, it would have, have been milliseconds, man. Ooh, wee. Ooh, woo, woo. Wow. I'm impressed. Anyhow, where I lost money was in this resumption. This resumption ended up being a little wild. But I lost money in here um, attempting a couple of trades. I mean, stuff like that, like, it, you know, dips down to 30, teleports to 70. Just magnificent. I attempted, a so I we had some small bids there. I attempted a trade. It evaporates through those bids. No boost. I'm going to try for 12. We had six on the bids. I get filled at 18. You know, this was a fair attempt right here. I took the loss. I needed to be in a little lower. This is how I got red, basically. Just a couple scalps, you know, putting me back. Let's see, I think there was a bigger one. Or is it just all smaller losses? Okay, it was all smaller losses. And then I took about a... Yeah, you can see, like, you know, like... Red 100, red 100, red 150, and it just adding up. Right here too, man. Right here was just a little disappointing because 
I'm looking for the dip entry and the thing would not dip and I decide I'm going to buy it rather than waiting for the break below five. I take it. We start to see 06 and I'm thinking, yes, the balance is about to happen. I stop out 92 and now the bounce is going to happen. And it's like, it's like, you know, are you kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me? I probably should have tried to get back in over 10. Uh, but a little disappointing here. So that entry at four is me looking for a move back up to 20. This, this area, I actually have a target. Like, hey, can I see a push back? I mean, you know, I think I would have sold here though. 20, 20, I would have sold half. 20, um, 5 and 30. I wouldn't have kept holding past it like here. But it got up to 42. I would have been out already. Perhaps back over 30 though if I was looking to be aggressive. Did we see 42 on the ask? Did we? 34, 35. Actually, I don't think we did. I'd have been out of 30 area, 25 area, 20 area, somewhere there. Maybe even high teens. Yeah, it said 42, but I only saw about 35. But yeah, anyhow, it was still a decent bounce. And that was kind of like my last, my last straw. Hmm. Just to, I mean, man. To be so unlucky. This is the beautiful thing with a hot market, though, is that there's so many opportunities. If we get something like this tomorrow, the odds are that I'm not going to get unlucky. So I'll be ready. I'll be here. Don't worry. I'll be here all the time. I'll be here like some fine wine. Sitting, waiting, getting better with time. Guys, hit that thumbs up. Remember, if you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hands. Let's continue to chase our greatness. Let's continue to be motivated. Let's continue to look forward to being better. Man, oh man. I hope this is the beginning of the next hot stretch. I hope, I hope, but even if it's not, you know, still good to see some good life like this. We'll be disciplined, we'll be patient, we'll be waiting. All right, hit that thumbs up, stay safe, stay green. It's been Relentless Raider. And I am signing out.